How do you get good at mixing? This is something that takes time, education, a lot of reps, and the ability to marry technical know-how with creative expression. This is something that's not very easy when you're a beginner. Either you're gonna be all feel and no ability, so your mix just sounds bad, or you'll be so technical that your mix lacks any feel or creativity. At some point, every aspiring engineer gets lost in the details, feels overwhelmed by all the options and information, constantly second guesses themselves, and spends hours and hours focusing on things that don't really matter. And the goal is to get through that stage as quickly as possible. So what is the best way to learn? And what's the fastest way to get good at mixing? Well, I'm gonna tell you how I would do it if I was starting over. And I think it really boils down to five things. First, you've gotta understand that this is a journey and there are different stages and levels you're gonna to have to go through. The first stage is all passion. You know, it's, it's very exciting. You don't even really care or notice that much whether your stuff sounds amazing. It's just that newness and that excitement of finishing a recording and mix. And that passion usually leads to wanting to learn more and wanting to get better. And that's where it gets harder. There are a whole lot of strong opinions in this pro audio world, and they're often at complete odds with each other. And that's just among the people who actually know what they're doing. You gotta add into that mix all the noise from people who haven't really made any real records or don't even have work that's worth emulating, but nonetheless have a very loud voice on the internet. And this is the stage of complexity and overwhelm. And it's something I went through and I often felt defeated. I would go and learn a tip or trick and it would make a difference in my mix, but the next day I would spot another shortcoming. It was just whack-a-mole with all the problems in my work and all the things that I didn't know. And it just led me deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole and everything got more technical and more complicated. But you can come out the other side. Now at some point, hopefully, you start to really understand this at a deep level. You start to hear things you couldn't hear before. And you start to trust your ears and the decisions that you make in response. You get to that point where you can hear a reference track or even imagine a sound. And instead of trial and error, you actually know which tools to reach for and what moves to make, and you can get there quickly. I could sum up the whole journey like this. As a beginner, you don't know what you're doing, your stuff doesn't sound good, but it's simple, exciting, and fun. Then as an intermediate, your work starts to sound a little better, but it's very complex, overwhelming, and often frustrating. But finally, as an expert, it's simple and fun again, but now you actually have the skills to make it good. And you can't skip past any of these stages. The question is, how long do you want it to take? The whole teach yourself thing is seen as a bragging point these days, and I admit, I had that attitude early on. But if you're doing the self-taught method, this journey could take you five, 10, 20 years, maybe you never get there. And that's not an exaggeration. You know, We work with people who we train and mentor that tell us that they've been struggling to achieve pro mixes for 20 years before finally coming to get help. Because pure time and pure hustle isn't necessarily enough. And I know the 10,000 hour rule and I believe in it. I believe you have to put in enough time to become an expert, but the content and the quality of those hours also matters. Like it's 2,500 miles from New York to LA, but you can't just get in the car and say, as long as I drive a total of 2,500 miles, I'm gonna end up in LA. Like you've gotta be going in the right direction. And that means getting help from someone who knows the way. Now, as someone who provides training and mentorship for a fee, I get that you might question my motives in saying this, but whether you wanna learn from me or from someone else, I wholeheartedly recommend that you find someone whose work you like, who has a proven track record, and go and learn from them. Learn one process start to finish. If you wanna get a taste of whether I can help you, go and check out my mixing cheat sheet. It's free, a lot of people tell me it improved their mixes a lot, almost instantly, and there's a link below for that. But the point is, being self-taught with the internet is like making an inch of progress in 100 different directions. Whereas learning one process from one source is how you make 100 miles of progress in one direction. The second key to getting good is to focus on what matters. Now, when you're learning production and mixing, the priority is hitting the standard. And yes, there is an objective standard of whether your mix is professional or not. Just listen to this.
I don't have to ask you which one sounded better. It's obvious. You hear it instantly. And the standard is very high today, not only for mix quality, but for timing, for tuning, for punch, for loudness. So as you're creating and learning, focus on figuring that out. How do they get their drums to hit that way? How do they get that very clear radio ready upfront vocal sound? How do they get that low end to be solid and big and consistent and translate everywhere? And then how do you make that consistent and second nature? Go and learn that formula from someone good. And then once you master that, you can start experimenting and being more unique. The problem is it's very easy to be all artsy and think that you've got to do something crazy new or special on every session, but no one is going to care about your uniqueness if you don't hit the standard first. Like if your drums sound amateur, then that really cool guitar tone doesn't matter at all because people are just going to skip the song. So if you're not a seasoned pro yet, stop thinking you need to reinvent the wheel or do something crazy and unique on every session. It's kind of like a guitar player who just wants to tap and shred, but they don't even know how to play basic chords and rhythm guitar yet. Build a solid foundation for your house. Third, I believe the fastest and most complete way to learn engineering and mixing is to be full stack. And that means you're not just relentlessly laser focused on mixing, you're also recording and editing and producing and getting your hands dirty on the entire process. There's a few reasons why this matters so much. And the first one is the flywheel effect, which is momentum. It's when things add on to each other and everything gets faster and easier. So if you learn to get better source tracks, well, that's automatically going to get your mixes better. And as you get better at mixing, which really is a process of just settling on the final tones for all the tracks, well, once those final tones are in your head more and more, you're going to find those tones easier and faster during tracking, even for something tedious like editing. Every time you fix a drum track that's out of time or tune a pitchy vocal, you're training your ear to recognize those things better. So you're going to notice tuning and timing problems more easily at the source, which gets you better mixes. So it all feeds into itself. I promise you, someone who is recording and mixing bands start to finish their quality over the period of one or two years is going to crush someone who is only focused on mixing. Because here's the second problem if all you ever do is mix. You have no control over the quality of the source tracks. And if you're just starting out, well, chances are you're not attracting high-level artists who are going to be sending you good tracks. So a lot of the time, you're handcuffed by low-quality material, and you're just making it that much harder on yourself to build a solid portfolio. So both for the sake of learning and for establishing your career, you should start out being full stack. You got to earn that title of being a full time mixer by getting in the trenches first and climbing the ladder. Fourth thing to realize is that done is better than perfect. So if you haven't reached that expert level yet, you should prioritize volume of material and experience over perfecting just one mix. Imagine an athlete who's training to get in shape and he goes to a track to run every day, the same track around and around, the same conditions, just trying to get a few seconds faster every time. Compared to an athlete who's training just as hard, but he's out running up and down hills on trails. He's in the cold, in the heat, he's running in wind and rain. Which guy is gonna be stronger? So don't spend weeks, I mean, don't even spend days working on a single mix. Just go deep, focus for a short period of time, finish it, and move on. I mean, after one day, you're probably not making your mix better anyways. You're just constantly making it different for no real reason at all. And the fact is, you're always going to be improving and looking back, wishing that you could do it better. I mean, for me, for a few years, I would finish a mix, send it for mastering, and then I'd have to wait four or six months before the record actually came out. And by the time it did, I would hear it again and think, well, shoot. I could do that better now. But that's just part of the game in any creative profession. You'll always think that maybe you could do better, but you can't let that stop you from getting work out there in the world and moving forward. Lastly, you are the main thing that matters. Your ears, your brain, not your gear, not your room, not your speakers. And I'm not denying that that stuff has an impact. You know, the gear that you use might make it easier or harder to achieve a result. But over time, the better you get, the less that stuff matters. It's funny, these days, anytime I see a band or a major label artist put out a video with the making of the record, they're almost never in a traditional studio. They're in a house on the beach or a cottage or they're recording backstage on tour. And that's because the value is all up here. That's what makes a record sound good or bad. And you can't take all of your gear everywhere, 
but you can take this everywhere. Changing your gear a lot is gonna slow you down and hinder your progress, so get a setup that works and stick with it. And sometimes you're due for an upgrade and there's nothing wrong with that, but to bring this back full circle to my first point, prioritize investing in yourself first, your skills, your knowledge, your network, instead of in gear and in things. So those are my thoughts on how to learn to mix at an elite level and what the journey looks like to get there. If you want some personal help with that, you can check out my website at the links below. And if you wanna watch another video on this topic, click here for the 10 things I wish I knew when I started mixing. All right, take care.